Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, this is week seven, or lab number seven. And this week I'm going to show you a different IDE that you should become familiar with because you're gonna be taking your midterm here in the near future. And during the midterm, you'll have access to Replit, which is an online IDE. So up until now, we've been using um, IntelliJ for all of your coding in Java, but uh, Replit is an online IDE that allows you to write code, test code, debug it and whatnot directly in your web browser. So if you fire up a web browser window and you go to replit.com, it's going to ask you to log in. When you log in, you're gonna pick a username and a password. Um, I would recommend that you probably use your KSU username. So uh, just sign up with your email address, um, your name at students.kennesaw.edu to create your account and make sure you remember your password. It's very important that you remember your password and not link it to a Google account or a Facebook account, which are two of the options during setup because during your lab, you're going to need to be able to log in, and that's not going to work if you're tied to a Google account or a Facebook account. You're gonna to need to be able to enter your password during the test. So make sure you sign up for an account, and then I'm just gonna show you around on how to use Replit real quick. So once you get logged in, you're gonna hit Create, and then uh, you're gonna get a menu which is gonna ask you what language do you want. So I'm gonna pick Java, and I'm going to say um, Create. Um, so that creates for me a new little Java program over here. I get my code window, I have a list of files on the left, and on the right I have the actual runtime environment where I can see what's running. So if I hit the run button, it's gonna compile this code and I'm gonna see the output over here on the right. And so you're gonna see right now, it's gonna say hello world after it compiles it. I will say it's sometimes a little bit slow, so you are gonna to have to bear with it as it does that because it is doing it all in your web browser, which inherently is going to be a little slower. All right, so just as a couple of examples, if I wanted to create an interface, I can hit this little file up here, which is the add file button. And then in here, I'm going to create a, um, I'm gonna do the same interface that I did last week, which was um, math.java. And that's gonna give me a file that's empty initially. And I'm going to say interface math. And then I can define my abstract methods in here. So public void add numbers int num1 and int num2, and then I may have a public void subtract numbers int num1 and int num2. And again, these are just random examples. So now I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call it decimal math.java. These are the same examples from last week, and I'm going to say class decimal, oops, math our implements uh, math. Okay, and you notice that it underlines it. It does some of the same syntax highlighting that you get. Um, so um, it, it's a little bit slower, and sometimes you'll see that it'll underline something, and then it'll take it away, and then it'll bring it back. And you can see right now it is telling me that the type decimal math must implement the inherited abstract method add numbers and subtract numbers. So that's the same error that you would have gotten in IntelliJ, and so it's telling me that I must have a public int add numbers, which takes in num1 and num2, and it must have an actual body, so return num1 plus num2, and then I also need a public int subtract numbers, int num1 and int num2, and then I would return num1 minus num2. All right, and I think in my math interface, I put these as void again for some reason. I seem to love doing that. Oops, wow, okay. Click int, and down here, we're gonna delete that and say int. Okay, so now it should be happy with all of that, and the underlining seems to be gone away. I'm gonna just hit the run button just so that it compiles it for me and tells me if there is an actual problem. If you're seeing weird underlining anywhere, and you're not sure whether it's real or not, just hit the uh, run button, and it will tell you. All right, it says decimal math is not abstract and does not override abstract method subtract numbers. Ah, because I called it subtract number, and here I called it subtract numbers. And again, this is why you should really have the override uh, keyword anytime you're overriding, because it'll check stuff like that for you. So um, I guess you could argue whether I should have put an S here or taken an S away there, but I've done one of those two, so that should solve the problem. There it is, and I got my hello world. I'm getting the hello world because that's what's up here. So I should be able to create an instance. This is my main.java where the main file is. So I'm gonna say decimal 
math. And you can see it does tap complete just the same as your um, IntelliJ. It's maybe not quite as good, but it's it's pretty close. Um, I'll call it my math equals new decimal. And again, I'm gonna tap complete that. And then um, I think I read in two numbers. So system dot out dot print line, enter number one. And then we're going to scanner. I'm going to do this up ahead. Oops, 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 oops. Um, scanner, my scan equals new scanner system dot in. All right, and you can see that it is highlighting that to tell me that I need to import. It doesn't do the imports automatically for you, so you are going to have to do that yourself. Java util uh, scanner is what I'm needing here, and that should fix that problem. These are highlighted in green, telling you that they're not exactly errors, but you made them and you never used them. Are you sure you did want it to do that? All right, so now I should be able to say um, int num1 equals my scan dot next int, and then I would do the same thing as here. Um, sorry, I'm used to having shortcuts turned on, which are not turned on here. That's why I'm getting weird characters sometimes on the screen. Forgive me. Um, all right, and so I'm going to enter in num2, and then I should be able to use my my math. So int answer equals my math dot add numbers and num1, num2. And then I should be able to print out the answer. Let's answer. Okay, so basically this is the exact same example that I did last week. The only thing that's different here is that it's all running in a web browser inside of um, IntelliJ. So num1, there's an 8, num2, there's a 2, and that gets you the answer 10. Um, one of the interesting features of Replit is that everything that I'm doing here in this Replit is actually publicly available. If you were to take that exact URL, pause the video and grab it, and put that into your browser, it would show you this exact block of code and you can run it. There's also a button on there which is located under, um, where is it located nowadays? It's located under here, um, which allows you to fork a replet. So if I go under here, I can hit fork. And what this does is it makes another copy of the replet. So specifically, if you were, go, if you were to go to replet.com slash at Enda Sullivan, and then look for near virtuous web sphere, which is just the random name it made up for this particular replet, um, there's a fork button on there, and if you hit fork, it will copy the code into your own replet, and then you can go in and make changes to it yourself. So you can start off with this code, and if you wanted to see what would happen with something else, you're welcome to then go in and make changes to it and see how that works. So pretty cool. Um, so this is a tool that you can use um, if you're not, if you don't have access to a, an, a, um, an IDE. Uh, this is a real handy thing. It's also used a lot in job interviews, so quite often if you do an interview nowadays, they're going to ask you to pop into a replet and solve a problem in the replet. It has built-in tests, it has built-in databases, it has all kinds of other stuff that's beyond the scope of this, but I wanted you to be aware of it and be used to it so that you can use it next um, in the next couple of weeks when you're taking your midterm exam and also your final exam, you'll have access to it as well. So that's replet. Um, this week, the, uh, the lab is a pretty simple one. You're just using the concepts that you've learned in the last few weeks. It's kind of a wrap-up lab where you're doing some of the stuff from uh, the previous couple of weeks. So that's going to be it for today, and I will see you guys next week.